Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we are returning to Oumuamua. Now, um, I actually had to make this video because of the sensationalist uh, announcement from a few days ago by a couple of Harvard scientists and um, I actually didn't really know how I'm going to do this video because on one hand, I actually would love to believe in extraterrestrial alien life sending probes to our solar system. On the other hand, the math and also the logic behind this paper is a little bit too extreme for me to take seriously. Today I'm going to explain to you um, the actual science behind this, or try my best at explaining it, and basically give you an idea of why you really need to be a bit of a more critical thinker when it comes to seeing announcements like um, this. Like, Harvard scientists say interstellar object may be a probe sent by alien civilization. Because honestly, um, seeing the name Harvard and also seeing the alien civilization there automatically makes you make an assumption, which is probably not going to be correct, especially if you actually read through the paper and also if you really dig a little bit deeper um, into the math behind it. And to start, what I really wanted to show you is, well, the paper itself, and you can actually find it in the um, description below, but basically you actually just need to read the title of the paper to understand that this is actually not what those two scientists are saying at all. They're asking a question, could solar radiation pressure explain Oumuamua's uh, peculiar acceleration? It's a question, it's a very hypothetical question. It's a could question. Um, and this is kind of what the paper is about. They use the mathematical concepts to try to explain that there's a slight possibility that um, if you were to modify the shape of the object and make it super thin, under a millimeter thin, while making the actual size of the object about 20 by 20 meters, um, it then mathematically makes sense uh, to see what we actually saw. And I'm, I'm going to explain to you in a second what we actually observed. Um, and, well, first let's actually think about it. So basically, uh, they took a, a, a hypothesis, they took a, an assumption, and they tried to um, find math to prove their assumption. Now, honestly, um, generally speaking, that's not really good science, because in science, you kind of do the observations first, and then you try to come to a conclusion. And although they actually kind of did that, I really don't like how they jumped the gun with this conclusion. And um, honestly, to me personally, it seemed like a bit of a an attempt to create a lot of sensationalism around this particular paper um, because um, in the last few months or so there were actually quite a lot of papers about Oumuamua but I believe almost none of them ever made it into the uh, news uh, they weren't really talked about but obviously as soon as you put the word alien in there uh, it kind of brings a bit of that sensationalism that is needed to capture uh, attention now, to me, this paper, even though it does use uh, relatively accurate math, um, has actually a lot of loopholes in it, including some mathematics that is based on assumption and some that is, well, it's not statistically accurate. It's actually, um, it's an assumption. Like I said, it, it's could, right? It's not can, and it's not even this is what's happening. Um, and because of this, you actually need to be very careful in interpreting the results. And so, um, is it a solar sail? Well, it's very likely that it's definitely not a solar sail. There's actually absolutely no evidence to suggest that it is a solar sail in any way. For all we know, uh, because of the shape and the actual um, thickness that was analyzed in this paper, it could be just a very large interstellar plastic bag. I mean, this could be it. Uh, and and maybe it's just some alien species that decided to throw their garbage at our solar system. I mean, that's obviously not very serious either, but to me that's kind of how it feels if you actually try to uh, approach this from a more um, realistic perspective, um, ignoring the facts that uh, it's basically aliens. Because in a sense, it's like that famous meme that was around a few years ago. Uh, I'm not saying it's aliens, but it's aliens. Although I think this version right here fits uh, it much better. I don't know, therefore aliens. To answer the hypothetical question that's asked in the beginning of the paper, could it be solar pressure? Yes, but only if the actual object has a tremendously strange shape. And this is actually uh, where I wanted to talk about the paper behind uh, all of this analysis that is actually brilliant. And unfortunately, because it doesn't have the sensationalist alien thing in it, it was kind of ignored. The paper I'm talking about is uh, something that was published in Nature, uh, I believe in May or maybe June of 2018. And it's uh, it's this, it's this uh, study by a few Italian scientists, uh, non-gravitational acceleration in the trajectory of Oumuamua. 
And in a nutshell, what they discovered is Umuamu that you see passing through our solar system right here, um, on the way out of the solar system, actually um, acquired a little bit of unusual acceleration that's normally uh, attributed to comets. Uh, and this is why for the longest time we actually thought this was a comet and uh, had a very, very cometary-like structure, but that's not the case either. As a matter of fact, this is probably a very weird, strange object that could have come from uh, another solar system, another star system, but it's maybe composed of something that's not common to the uh, comets in our solar system. It may actually have a very different composition. Now, let's actually take a look at this paper very briefly because I want to show you how brilliant it is and how it should be the one uh, everyone's talking about, not the paper about could it be aliens. So first of all, in this particular study, they actually uh, looked at the images of Oumuamua and they found out that it doesn't seem to have this uh, stereotypical cometary tail that you expect there. And their explanation was, well, it's actually pretty logical. It's, uh, it's to state that they only took a look at certain types of particles. They didn't really think it would have unusual particles coming out of the actual cometary body. And so it's quite possible that it was just something that they didn't really look for. However, unfortunately, uh, this paper, including a few other uh, studies I looked at, automatically assumed that we saw nothing. And that's really not true. It just, we weren't really looking for everything. On the other hand, in this study, they look at certain explanations and they actually discredit them. And one of them is exactly what uh, that paper from Harvard University is talking about, solar radiation pressure. They specifically say that it's just very, 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 very unlikely. It's very difficult to have a good enough explanation to say that it's a solar radiation pressure. They also looked at uh, what's known as the Yarkovsky effect. Uh, you can check out the video on the channel where I explain what this is. It's essentially usually related to asteroids. Um, they also even took a look at uh, relativistic effects that Mercury experiences uh, when it moves closer uh, to the sun. And none of this really fit the picture. They looked at uh, sudden changes of maybe explosion on the surface or um, this being an unusually shaped binary object. None of these really um, explain this very well. And uh, this is the one that I actually thought maybe was possible, the magnetization effect. They even did the math behind, um, well, what if it's a magnetized object that has a magnetic field? As a matter of fact, what if the magnetic field is so strong that the solar radiation um, and the charged particles can actually move the object a little bit and give it that acceleration. And they took a look at this and they found out that, well, you basically need something that's 100,000 times stronger than a typical magnetic field of an asteroid. So in that sense, that's also out. And so the best uh, scenario here was that it was a type of an outgassing. Uh, it was basically a type of a cometary event when essentially the comet starts losing material because it's uh, being heated up by the sun. And this material creates a kind of a basically a mini uh, rocket-like engine that propels the rocket into a certain direction. Now, um, this is from the Rosetta mission. This is what we saw there. And uh, this is what we thought is happening on the beautiful Oumuamua, but because it's such a strangely shaped object and because of basically its origin, uh, we obviously didn't really know uh, what else might be going on here. And this is where I kind of want to step back and uh, remind you of a few historical events um, that had a kind of a similar origin. Um, there was a video I made about Mercury, how scientists used to think that mercurial orbit was changed by an imaginary planet called Vulcan. For the longest time, scientists spent uh, quite a lot of time and money looking for the Vulcan because they were convinced that there was this uh, planet that was hidden and it was the only way to explain peculiar orbits of Mercury. But then Einstein came along and explained it all with beautiful mathematics and theory of relativity. He explained the universe in a way nobody ever thought of explaining. Now, it's very possible, I'm not saying that it, it is this, but it's very possible that this is kind of what's happening with Oumuamua. It's an event that we just can't explain yet, and it's uh, an event that someone one day will definitely explain, in the same way that we explained the changes of orbits um, of asteroids with the Yarkovsky effect. Now, assuming that this is an alien object with a strange shape is going a little bit too far, because there's absolutely no evidence to show that. And science is usually based on evidence that you can actually uh, use to uh, repeat the experiment. Now, here we don't have that. We don't really have any evidence that this is a solar sail. We've detected no um, electromagnetic pulses. We've detected no emissions, no reflections, nothing to suggest that this is some kind of a alien device. 
And the only thing we know for a fact is that Oumuamua uh, changes trajectory a little bit due to slight acceleration similar to cometary acceleration that most comets experience when they come to uh, our Sun. We also know that it spins a little bit fast and we also know that it does seem to have a peculiar shape. Those are the facts, those are the only things we know. What comes out of those facts and how it's explained is another story. But jumping the gun and basically saying that this is alien simply because of unexplained phenomena is a little bit unscientific. It kind of reminds me of another story uh, with another famous discovery, the so-called Tabitha star, which was actually discovered by the citizen scientists. And this star is actually also known as, uh, well, this KC8462852. Uh, it's also known as Tabby Star for, uh, shortly. But basically, um, the idea here was that the main researcher basically said the opposite. Don't jump in into conclusions thinking that it was aliens that were causing unusual dimming of the star. There is probably a more natural explanation. It was one of the possible explanations that maybe there was a, a mega structure around it. But as the time progressed, we realized that no, it's probably not that. As a matter of fact, it's very, very likely that it's unusual cometary activity, which really makes sense. And so what can we possibly conclude about Oumuamua after all of these scientific studies and all of these uh, observations? Nothing. We cannot conclude anything yet. And that's really because we have not done any follow-up studies, we have not done any additional observations, and the only observations we have are very, very limited. It's literally like trying to guess what a speck of light is in the skies based on very limited data. It's unfortunately um, not going to be easy for us to actually uh, maybe even find a conclusion to this particular object. We might not never actually know what it is, but I think um, most scientists agree with me when I say that it's very, very unlikely to be anything extraterrestrial in terms of aliens. It's an extraterrestrial object, it came from outside of our solar system, but it's not um, an alien probe, most likely. However, um, if these two scientists from Harvard University produce an additional observation where somehow we see that it's unusual synthetic material, or uh, they produce some kind of a reflection that can only be done by, for example, a solar sail, or maybe they even see through the object, and so we can actually uh, understand that it's a very thin, transparent object, in that case, they definitely have something to go on with. But based on the math that they have in this paper, there is unfortunately not enough to conclude that this is an extraterrestrial object. And so on that note, um, hopefully now you understand why um, critical thinking is super important. And also, when you hear or see an announcement like this, that Harvard scientists uh, think it's an alien probe, you kind of have to step back a little bit and first ask yourself a question. Are other scientists saying the same? And most importantly, are there actually other easier explanations? Occam's razor. The easiest explanation is usually the best. And I think the easiest explanation for Oumuamua is that it's a comet. It's a weird, unusual comet from another star system that we've just never seen before and may even contain materials that are not typical of comets here in the solar system. And for that reason, maybe it has a different type of outgassing. For all we know, there is a million other explanations, but I think Alliance is pushing it a little bit too much. Anyway, thank you for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. And if you did or if you didn't, uh, leave a comment below telling me what you think it might be. Also, consider subscribing to the channel and sharing this video with someone who enjoys learning about space through simulations and video games and just wants to learn about the universe. I'll see you guys tomorrow, come back tomorrow to learn something else, space out, and as always, bye-bye.